to HD Studios presents the garage. You know, the legendary <laughs> Frank. Gotta throw the minds up, man. Gotta throw the minds up. Hey, hey, y'all feel that? Feel that. So how you been, man? Hey, man, it's been wonderful. Been doing a lot of things, man. Trying to make a lot of things happen. So, yeah, it's been wonderful, man. I've been, I've been chilling. It's going down. Yeah, man. You, you know, uh, something that's crazy. I ran into a guy that uh, helped me get out of jail when I was seventeen, and um, he basically was to, like reminded me of that somebody gave me a skill and I, I took it and made studios with it and you know recording and stuff like that and like uh, I, that's when I think about you like that's how I think about like because I know you gave it to CJ Mag, Sir Versatile uh, I'm talking about the skill. Mm -hmm. Like, well, who? Like, it's a, it's other people too. Yeah, uh, us well, young Chuck, <laughs> you know, young Chuck, uh, Vino, King Vino, mm -hmm. um, Sarcosis. You remember Sarcosis? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, All right. You he, know, young Chuck was later though. No, young Chuck, Chuck came in with me when young Chuck was twelve. He was twelve years old when he got down with me. Oh, I yeah. He been he been under my he was under my wing for some years. Oh, I didn't know that. I didn't yeah, know that. and then Midwest Tone on the gutter day and them they came in, and um, you know uh, it was uh, of course CJ and, and Versatile they built a studio with me. Yeah, did. So like, they was there. CJ still doing that. Yes, yes, yeah, CJ, yeah, yeah. yeah see, I mean CJ, we we hooked up, teamed up in uh, nineteen ninety. Uh, seven, I think. That's when me and CJ started teaming up. So he was a young kid, and um, yeah, I remember the pictures on the wall in the studio uh, on Franklin. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it was. It's, it's been a minute. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, but like, when when did you really start doing it? Cause like I remember, like you, you know, we talked. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then you you was kind of explaining like like the seventies. Yeah. So yeah, that that's when I got into. I got into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I was I we we patterned our group after Michael Jackson. That was the lead singer. Oh, what was it called? We we were, we were the right the, the we were the right brothers. It was me and my brothers, and uh, we used to do the then the McClintons. We used to do the patio little get ups and all of that. <laughs> all right, so so you you from the nuns? Yeah, from the nuns. So like, you're yeah, from the start, the start. Oh, you went to Libby? Yeah, I went to Libby, but I went to Macomer first. Oh, okay. And then you know I I went to Libby because uh, after after probably like uh, about three or four months at, at Macomer, you know I was pretty much dropping out, so I went to Libby, and then I just did a couple of months in Libby, and I was done with school. So you know my my education is. But you know, kind of self-taught myself everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that indoctrination factor didn't happen to me. So well, with, with the music? No, what, what I'm talking about with my philosophy and things like that. But if, in terms of the music, you know, I had. Uh, uh, I'm talking. We was like on. We in '73. Yeah, right '73. Yeah, we were, we were doing like the little shows around yeah. the the projects and stuff like that, and had all the girls. Around and then you know I'm spinning and doing my Michael Jackson thing, and then the girls you know we we would leave and they would chase us, yeah. you know do we get chases like you know screaming after I was done that was what my life yeah. oh, <laughs> I didn't want to do anything else man I, yeah yeah you was hooked I was hooked from How that old point was you right there? I was eight I was eight years old. eight yeah oh yeah you was <laughs> once I once I got hooked man it wasn't no turning it back you know it was like you know. When we was fascinated with Michael Jackson them anyway. They had the cartoons out and all of that. So yeah. we wanna <laughs> yeah, was gonna be the we next was gonna be the next, we be the next yeah, we were gonna be the next in line, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh yeah, my brothers them they, they got into it to it with me. I mean they got into the music thing with me. And they were pushing me on or urging me on. Yeah. So that started in nineteen seventy three. Yeah. But in nineteen eighty, that's when the whole thing changed over because that's when I met Prince. Oh, okay. For the first time, yeah. So and, tell me about it. Me yeah. Think. Where was it at? Where well, you Prince, was, Prince was opening up for Rick James. Oh, uh, uh, 
Oh, yeah, shit. they did yeah. a fire, fire it up, fire up tour or something like that. Yeah. And Prince was, uh, but I used to hang out with all of them because see, back in the day, it used to be a Holiday Inn, right down on Summer Street. Yeah. And I used to walk down to the Holiday Inn on the concert day. Yeah. Walk down the kind of Holiday Inn, and I went, I knew that's where they was at. You know, they would book them. They would stay in the Holiday Inn. So I go in the Holiday Inn, and I would meet Frankie Beverly and Roy Ayers and uh, yeah. that all the big time entertainment. I mean, all the big time stars back then. Yeah. So then I went down there and I met Prince. Yeah. And Prince took me in. Yeah, Prince took me in, and um, and then we was walking around in the sports arena and everything like that. And never forget it, man. I I went to his room, you know. I went to the, the green room, and Prince and uh, uh, you know they had Andre Simone and Dez Dickerson and Lisa. And them. They was all in there. And then I walked in and I said, I, I went to Andre Simone. I said, I said, hey, what's up, Prince? And then said, and he said, I'm not Prince. Prince mm -hmm. over there. And I looked around, and then it was this little bitty dude. <laughs> <laughs> I had that same feel where I met Avon. That's what y'all do. Yeah. He was a little guy. I was like, man. Yeah, but I was a little dude who came out with some big old high heels on, man. I was like, <laughs> because on his album back then, he had the long hair, like, you know, all the way down the back and stuff, like on that Prince cover. Yeah. And he had the perm and all of that. And that's how Andre Simone looked. Yeah. So I was thinking Andre Simone was Prince because they all light skinned and all like you know what I'm saying. So, <laughs> yeah. But Prince cut his hair off. Prince, didn't, you know, he was he was oh, a dirty yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. No, so he he threw me off. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But anyway, he came in. And he he was like, hey, what's up? What's up, my dude? He was and dude was goofy. You know, Prince yeah. was really goofy dude, man. And then I got to talking to him. We got to laughing. And I had my little tape with me, like my little Walkman. Like I was making all of these songs at home. Like I'm about to show Prince that I can get down just like he can. Because I was playing all the instruments too. Because I was being patterning myself at the Prince. Yeah, Because yeah. I was already into it from Michael Jackson. So Prince came. And I was like, okay, man, I can get down with Prince, man. I'm about to let him hear myself, man. So yeah, I, I popped yeah. out my, my Walkman, you know what I'm saying? Me and Prince was walking around sports arena and see the girls screaming all through the window. Like, ah, I said... Tell them Prince, man, they, you know, they hollering for me, you know. Yeah. Yeah. My people, man, they hollering for me. <laughs> yeah. You know, so he laughing and we just yeah. kicking it, you know what I'm saying? So I pull out my Walkman. I said, man, you got to check out some of this music, man. Check me out, man. I'm, I'm hot. Yeah. So he popped, he, he put the, head, put the uh, headphones on. I played them. Man, he listened to it for like 10 seconds, man. <laughs> Gave my earphones. <laughs> he said, "You need to go to a studio." <laughs> and then I looked at him. I said, "A studio? What's a studio?" I didn't know what a studio was. Yeah. So, so he said, "You need to go to the studio." And I said, "Okay, what's a studio?" Then he laughed at me and he got on the drums. I got on the stage and he playing with the mic, putting the mic in my face, and just playing games and stuff, being silly. So, you know, we kicked it that night, man. He. Invited me back to eat with him and eat food with him, and you know, they gave me the whole little thing, man. We was real cool, we, real cool yeah, dudes. Yeah. Changed everything around. That got me into the studio, so I didn't know nothing about the studio until I met Prince. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I went home, and then I started recording with uh, Steve Sharon. He had it in his basement. Sharon you know? Studio. Sharon Studio. Yep. I started recording down there in Sharon Studio, and uh, Steve Sharon started showing me stuff like about how the to make the sounds and stuff feel right and sound good and come out and all that. And I was like, Question. Man, man. Where you learn to play all the instruments from? Where did you get? Or did you just self taught? Yeah, I was just self taught because I was just, I was just, I was self taught because, you know, my brother, you know, he seen me grow from that Michael Jackson thing in 73. Yeah. So he bought me a bass, right? Yeah. And then my cousin came through because, uh, you know, her self dad died. He was a guitar player. And he get, and she came and gave me his guitar. And that guitar was a Telecaster, a 1967 Telecaster. And I didn't know what it was, so I was just banging it, you know, throwing it against the wall. Oh, yeah, some money. <laughs> I didn't have a clue what it was. He just gave it to me, but I learned how to play it. You know what I'm saying? I learned how to play that guitar. But I didn't know the value, so it, it ended up probably in the, in the garbage somewhere, man. Yeah. But it was a valuable guitar that she gave me. 
So then I, I learned how to do that. And when I started learning how to do that, I got to start playing drums and I just start learning how to do all of the instruments. So I started making my own songs. That's when I started making my own songs. So that was in, uh, that was in 70, 79 was when I started doing that because that's when Prince dropped that uh, Prince album. And then I heard that he did all of his instruments, so I started dibbling and dabbling in the instruments. So well, you, you yeah. were telling me, yo, right, so it was a R and B group or was it rap? It was a rap group. Oh, talking about um, Hunter. Hunter. No, 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 no. You talking about Tim Hunter? Yeah. Oh, it Tim, was a Tim. Group. Oh, Tim Hunter. Me and you know me and Tim Tim Hunter. He called himself a roster now. Me and roster go all the way back to eighty one because when I started learning how to play guitar and stuff like that. I hooked up with Rick Rob Rick Robinson, Devon, and uh, there's a guy named Paul. We all formed a group called Ice Water, I think. <laughs> Start, we started to do do shows, and when we started doing shows with Rick uh, Robinson's uh, still fat uh, father, his name was the Duke of Earl. So we was yeah. back then. So we had all of us young kids back there, you know, playing. We were young, you know, playing and stuff like that. I think, Afros. yeah, we was Afros and stuff like that, <laughs> young and all that. So I was playing, you know, I was hit the stage, man, and then he gets on stage and all these girls screaming and all of that, man. I was like. Man, this is what I'm about to do yeah, for so the rest of my life. Yeah. <laughs> some equipment uh some pedals and he walked past and he started saying talking music with me and then you know he seen i knew what i was talking about you know so he started we started really getting in the conversation and i was telling him about the podcast and one of the guys from the movie dirty money the movie uh the guy that played tommy d craig came in and started talking to me and i wanted to interview him Mm -hmm. You know, so I wanted to talk to you about interviewing him, but he was saying he was going to fly out to uh, Japan or something. Mm. Like he was flying out somewhere in a little bit. So, but I, I, I want that's funny that you would say that. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. But, uh, you know, me, me and Rasta, Tim Hunter, we, we hooked up back in the early 80s, like 81, I think. Because yeah. I seen uh, Tim, Tim was playing with a group called Colorscope. 
And I went down there to see them, and I was blown away how he was playing. Because I was like, I was playing guitar, but I wasn't playing like Tim. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tim was really playing, like riffing and doing all this. And then yeah. I hooked up with Tim, and me and Tim became like best friends. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So where our friendship lasted all the way till today. I can call him. That's my dude. We we yeah, about right. to do songs and everything. So it's yeah. like, you know, that was, uh, me and him grew in music together. And then there was Keith Porter. That, that was another guy that came in and helped me with the drum machines. Because back then, it wasn't on drum machines when I started. Wait, wait, did he have a studio um, by the kitchen of the poor? Uh, no, Keith was. I think Keith was on, on, over there by uh, is, um, it was uh, Islington over there. Okay. Yeah. So it was like he, he uh, because we were doing drums, you know what I'm saying? We I didn't know about no drum machines or nothing like that. Yeah. So Keith Porter was the one that, that was start telling me, showing me how to work the drum machine. What year was that? That was in 1981. Oh, 81. Yeah. So they, you were just getting all the pieces. Yeah, I was getting all the pieces. Yeah, I was getting all the pieces. See, that's what I, I really like respect, like, because, of course, um, like, I was pushed away from knowing you directly because of, we was almost in competition. Right, you know right, what I'm right. So, but in later times when we get to talking, um, uh, like I, I get to know you, and I'm like, damn, this dude is smart as fuck. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, I, or I wanted knowledge from you. And I'm like, I missed out on all that time. You know? <laughs> you know yeah, man. But, uh, you know, I, I had gotten, when I got into that music with Tim and all of that, that's when my music started going to another level. Cause yeah. I we started really learning how to play, and yeah. Tim used to write songs, and I was, you know, kind of vibing off of him, and I started writing good songs. So, so. I, I ran into your mentor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Tim. Oh, oh, slipping. Look, and then look, see, it was on my spirit, cause like when I was talking to my cousin that was in the movie, like he was coming out the store, and he was he like stutter stepped and looked at me like. And then he turned and went about his business. But I was thinking, like, damn, I got to talk to Frank to get in touch with him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. So he, he my dude, man. So he went down to Atlanta with me. He moved down to Atlanta with me. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, in, in 91, uh, I took the whole band. We we was man, down. You, we, we talked about that. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, we took, I took the whole band down there with me. They came down there, man, and we got our own apartment and all that, man. We were down there making money, and then unfortunately his mom died. And see, what happened was when his mom died, Tim had came back to Toledo, and then our band had suffered a lot because Tim was playing so many roles. He was the talk box. He yeah. was the reggae man. He was a guitar player. He was a kid. So he had, his shoes were too, too, uh, it was too yeah. big to fill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah. To, yeah. The, to the band. Yeah. So, so, uh, up to 85. Okay, I'm gonna, I take it from 85. Yeah, I can take it back to 80. Yeah, yeah, but had on the street, but he was back down. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't. So in 85, in 85 is when my brother, they they had this rap group called Three to Hard Hardway. Was Randy? It was my brother Tent. Tim. Randy that promote? No, Randy. He he got killed. Uh, he got killed uh, back in the 90s, I think. But you said three the hard way. Yeah, it was three the hard way. And, and what was your uh, uh, your position as just the engineer? And no, no, I was I was producer. Yeah, I was putting their music together. Oh, okay. And so then you, they, you was doing the boom bap off the drum machine now. Yeah, because I, I was oh, there. You know, what I'm saying yeah. I was able to create an instant. And then they went to the studio one time, and they came out with this song with the Isley Brothers sample. And I was really impressed with my little brother and them because yeah. wasn't nobody rapping back then. Yeah. But so it, it was like they had got turned out from the concert that was done by, uh, um, you know, hip hop, hip it, hip it, hip it, hip it, uh, don't stop the rock, bang, Shaquille bang. Shaquille Yeah. So, <laughs> what year was this? Like? This was in like 80, 85. 85. It was like 85, like the beginning of 85. Was it sports arena? Yeah, no, they were like the Pantheon. Okay, okay. It was the Pantheon. They, so they pretty much had, you know, patterned themselves after, after the Sugar Hill Gang. And this was before anybody started rapping here. You know, I'm, I, I would assume that other people started rapping. But yeah. they, when they started going to the studio 
And when they started going to the studio, and then I said, well, I'm going to go ahead and produce them because they had proved to me that they, they, was, real, they was a real deal. So I started producing songs with them in 1985. 85. So you know, you know, I'm from that era. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, 85, I remember going to the sports arena, mm -hmm. to the Fresh Fest. So do what? And that was, was in 85. Like, that was like 85, 86. Mm -hmm. With uh, Sweet Low. With, uh, I think that was 87. Was that, was that the uh, 87? Uh, 87 was when uh, Lodinas and all of that start popping and uh, yeah, grip, yeah. grip and. Uh, you know, they had a group, group, group guns. Full, jam Force. Yeah, Jam yeah. Force, yeah. That was in 87. Okay. Yeah, because Tricky, Rick Robinson, yeah. he was the one that was bringing all of, a lot of them groups down there. Okay, to the I ain't never knew that. Yeah, that was, that was Tricky. Rick Robinson was doing that. You know that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But in 85, you know, we was, we was already hitting the scene and everything like that. So... Uh, they was out putting out, uh, pumping out music and selling tapes and stuff like that in 1985. So Sweet and Low, now I remember Sweet and Low. Yeah, and, I forgot and about Mr. Him. International, you remember him? Yeah, well, yeah, well, that, that was after that. Was yeah, after, yeah. yeah th those was all after that. Yeah, that but, point. but I remember uh, Sweet and Low had the uh, Compton Killer. Mm -hmm. He had the Compton Killer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I, I remember in Dodenham, they had a group, uh, sure, The Joint yeah. Mob. That was in the early 90s, I believe. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it, you know, we, we was doing it in 85. So you, Ed, Ed Jackson, Eric Jackson, I'm sorry. Eric Jackson was the DJ. He was the one scratching. Yeah. And this was back in 85. So Eric Jackson, he was scratching for the, my, me and my brother's group, rap group. And he taught DJ Lightning Rod how to scratch. Oh, for real? Yeah. You yeah. like the godfather of this shit. You yeah. like, yeah. you like, you like, it ain't no music scene in Toledo if it ain't for you. No, I'm saying, like, serious, like, because you went from the Michael Jacksons to the Prince era to the to the rapping mm -hmm. with your brother in them in 85 mm -hmm. to, like, you know, like, you the center. Mm -hmm. Like, bam, you come and then you know Eric Jackson, he scratched for y'all. But now he's scratching for the king of the scratch. I mean, he taught the king of the scratch how to scratch. You know, a party don't rock a ride, don't rock a <laughs> Right. But if, if he don't meet Eric Jackson, then he right. don't meet, and, and, you know what I'm saying? It all, like, right. It, we, we was trying to teach everybody that we could, you know, that yeah. was interested in that music. So me and Bernard Terry had put together a project to submit to, uh, I think it was uh, Warner Brothers. Yeah. And um, you know, it just it just didn't pan out. It just didn't work out. So you know, I, I kept on. I kept on this trying. was pushing you. Yeah, this was pushing me. I was I was trying to get a contract for as Warner a Brothers as a as an artist. Rapper or I was a singer. Singer. Yeah. yeah. So it's like I was trying to get that that deal with Warner Brothers, and it and it and it, it just didn't pan out. So I just uh, kept on producing music. And I kept on producing music. I first started to learn how to do engineering because after I left Steve Sharon, uh, we started traveling. When I say we, I'm talking about me and Keith Porter started yeah. traveling, traveling up to Detroit, and that's where they had the school of engineering at. So we went up there, and that's when I met Greg Riley. And Greg Riley was mixing uh, Parliament Funkadelic. He was mixing. Um, a group called One Way, and he was mixing the big people, the big people that was in the industry. Yeah. And then Greg Riley took me under his wing, and that's when I learned how to work the SSL board. He had some assistants that that helped me out to understand the SSL board and how to work all of the compressions and all of that stuff. Yeah, so that was in '81. That's the big one. Yeah, that's the one that. Yeah, that's the one to wrap all the way around. Yeah. Okay. So that's why I learned.